Hey guys, my name is Ali and I'm a data analytics manager working in Oslo, Norway. In this video, we're going to start off a data analyst project which you can add to your own data analyst portfolio. What is going to be different about this project though is that this project is going to be based on your personal data. In this video, I'm going to give you guys an overview of how the project will be, you know, from episode to episode and then I will give you guys an introduction to what the project is and how I have thought about it. Then we're going to talk about what is the business request for this project and then at the end, we're gonna talk about how we are going to track and structure data, which we will use for the rest of the project. So if we look at the overview, like I said, this is the first episode, I'm giving you guys an introduction. We're gonna talk about the business request and the data setup. The second episode, we will create the actual data model. The third one is we're gonna create the dashboard. The fourth, I'm gonna show you guys how you guys can add it to your existing portfolio. And then I'm gonna show you guys the final results, and then we will reflect on what we have learned in this project. So let's start us off. So, what I want this project to be, I want it to be based on your personal data. And that is, you know, I can tell you guys right away that if you, if you guys are expecting this to be a project based on SQL, doing a lot of SQL queries, practicing that, you are not going to be able to do that in this project. I want this project to be based on some sort of process that you identify and that you then structure yourself into a data model. I'm not trying to make you guys into a data engineer necessarily, but I want you guys to know what is a fact table, what is a dimension table, how are they differently structured and if you were to track some data how would you do it so we're going to make a fairly simple data model but then i'm also going to show you guys how you can take something simple and actually do a lot of different types of analysis on that we will structure data in, in excel as a source we're going to talk about later what is a data model what is a fact and a dimension table then like i said we're going to create the data model um, we're going to make a dashboard and add it as an and add it as another project to your data analyst portfolio and I want to end this off, you know, end the intro off, just say, don't just copy what I do. Try to make it more personal. Try and think about some sort of process that you want to track over time. And that will make it, first of all, a lot more fun. And if you are to present this to someone, it actually has a personal touch, which is also nice. And you're also showing that you can identify a process. You can identify some sort of case and you can structure that data into the right way it should be for data analysis purposes. And then you can actually perform analysis on that. So the business request is usually something that comes, you know, it's very, it's in the word business request. It comes from the business, they send you some sort of request. And what we, what we usually do in agile development is that we use user stories to define some sort of user stories so that we ensure that we capture certain, certain moments. So very basically defined, it is as a persona, I want to sew that. And now the expanded version of that is as a, who is it for? I, what you want to achieve, and then the benefit or problem you are trying to solve. So the topic that I'm gonna use is exercise. I like to exercise and I try to walk a certain amount of steps every single day just to ensure that I get enough, you know, just enough activity because you know, I work on my computer, I sit a lot, of, uh, a big part of the day, I have to make sure that I stay moving. So I made one user story and you can make more if you want to, but the one that I've done is I've said that as an exercise enthusiast, I want to track my steps to ensure I get enough activity. As a financial controller, I want to get uh, an overview of costs to ensure that we don't spend too much on some sort of sort of process. Or as a sales manager, I want to get an overview of sales per uh, region to uh, identify the region which gives us the most profit or something like that. It can be anything. So I want you to try to think about, okay, what is something that I would be willing to track over time and try and, try and see if you can write some user stories based on that. Just some personal, personal um, practice, um, which we later can use uh, when we add it to the portfolio. And then it's once again, um, kind of where this will start off. And that this is something you can look back, at, uh, back on at the end when you're done and see if you actually, uh, if you actually solved what you defined in the beginning as a user story. So the next thing we're gonna look at is we're gonna track and structure data. We are going to organize it into a fact table and some dimension tables. And this is just to teach you what those two different things are, understand the concepts. It's good to know if you are, you know, if you are interacting with a data engineering team, it is good to know how that plays in because the structure often plays a big role when you are trying to do data analysis in tools such as Click. Power BI and also Tableau. So a fact table, a fact table consists of the measurements, metrics, or facts of a business process. 
A dimension table is a structure that, or that categorizes facts and measures in order to enable users to ask, answer business questions. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create a fact table, and we're gonna create, uh, I think I'm, I'm gonna have two dimension tables, and then we are going to create a model of that, and we will visualize based on that. But try and keep in mind, you know, what is a fact table, what is a dimension table, and think about that. And also think about how, I will point it out later, but when we create calculations, when we are going to filter, notice where do you filter from, where do you put the calculations, and how does that play in, because it actually plays in quite a lot. Um, so the fact table that I will have is going to be named fact activity and I will have two dimension tables, one which is called dim date and one which is called dim activity. So let's take a look at that so you can see what that will look like. So what I've done is that, you know, I've just started this in the beginning of May. So I've just started to track every single day. How many steps do I get? So you can see I have three columns and this is my fact table. And notice, like, like it said previously, in the fact tables you keep the metric which you are going to use for analysis purposes. So steps is the metric. Now the activity, FK, FK stands for activity foreign key, which means that each one of these numbers are pointing, are identifying what this steps activity is and is defined in the dimension table. And the date is just which date did I do the activity, and that is also something we're gonna to connect to a date dimension where we can have more information about what that date is. So like, if we think back at it, we have one metric, which is steps. That is the metric which we're gonna do analysis on. We have a foreign key with two different values, which is going to categorize the steps. And then we have the dates, which we're really going to use to connect to a date dimension table, which will say something about when did we do the activity. So let's just take a look at the dim date. Now here, I've actually just added the dates and I haven't added any more fields because I want to create those later in the visualization tool. I'm gonna to create those in Power BI. Based on the date, we can, we can extract a lot of different information. We can extract what year is it, we can extract what month is it, which weekday, we can extract um, which uh, which week it was um, no. if we if we tracked in the fact table how many steps did I have per hour we could have looked at you know how many steps do I walk during the day is it you know, more in the morning more in the day other things in the dim activity we only have two different labels we have one which defines is if the activity is walking and, and the other defines if I went for if I went running that day. And you can see that I've added some, you know, uh, we're going to clean up a little bit. We're going to do some, some some minor transformations in Power Query, but that's not the focus of this. The focus is that we're going to track some data. We're going to learn what is a fact table, what is a dimension table. And I'm going to show you guys what kind of analysis you can do with a very, very simple model, but you can still do a lot of quite cool data analysis, which we'll do in the, in the dashboard then uh, I will show you guys how we can integrate that into your portfolio later. So take a look at this. I will add the spreadsheet on my GitHub, but I want you guys to think about something you, you guys want to track over a certain period, you know, do it per day, add, add a date to it, add some sort of foreign key to it, which defines what kind of activity or what, whatever it is, and create a dimension table for that and create a date table. And then we will use that later in the rest of the project. Yes, I know this project isn't necessarily a project that has a lot of SQL or it is going to be super advanced, but sometimes identifying something that is simple, being able to explain that very well and do analysis on that is actually more valuable than trying to find something which is very advanced, do a lot of advanced things, present that and just be a hard use case to understand. So the purpose here is that you're going to learn how to structure data. You're going to learn what is a fact table, what is a dimension table, how do we create that data model, how do we visualize it, and how do we take something that is fairly simple, a simple process, and then we actually do a lot of different types of data analysis on that. And what I think is the best thing is that you can find something that is your personal passion or your personal data or something that you think is cool, and you can actually do some data analysis on that. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. If you wanna follow this series or you wanna see more videos on data and analytics, then subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.